Hello there. This is a buck knife. This is a buck knife that I promised that I would be trying. This is a buck, a Chinese buck. And I said I was going to try one of these, so here it is. This is Buck's Canoe. I don't know if I said that. But I bought this at my local Walmart. So this is pretty much what I got. I got a little bit of a paper. And I think that there is something else down here at the squish down here at the bottom. Oh, I think it's a, it's a silica gel pack. So that's all that came. A message from Buck. Welcome to the Buck family. Blah, blah, blah. And the knife... It is plastic. I don't know if if I bought it somewhere else, I would get like the instructions or whatever for this knife. But that's the packaging that I got. This is an absolutely beautiful knife. It's in bone. Now, I don't know if that is real bone or synthetic. I would assume it's synthetic. But it has a grain structure up close. I don't know if you can see it or not. That makes it seem to me like it could be bone. And there are some slight voids or imperfections that also make me think it's possible. And since this is a Chinese knife, uh, a lot of the lower priced Chinese knives are actually using bone. So I don't know. It doesn't matter. This knife is beautiful. It's jig bone, amber bone, I believe. You have the buck shield. But it's just the, the um, color of this bone and these brass bolsters make this knife absolutely stunning, in my opinion, the way that it looks. When you look at this knife, the fit and the finish of this knife is absolutely beautiful now I've been carrying this knife for three or four days or maybe a week five ten five six days but you open this knife up it has I would call that a spear point but a lot of people probably would call it a drop point or something like that I don't care but I love the way that the blade is hologram, but when you look at it, it's got this plunge line here, for lack of a better word. Instead, most of them are ground all the way up to the back of the spine. And you have buck and the model number. It, that's beautiful. Uh, there is some unevenness when you look at how far up this line went and how far up it went here you see that it did not go quite a, the same distance and if you look at the knife head on you can see that there's a little bit of variance there that's not a problem for me this is an eighteen dollar knife oh uh, and I love 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 the uh, design of this knife you have this blade it's got really, really nice walk. It's nice and smooth in its travel. And very nice talk. This blade. Is the same. Beautifully done. It's a pen blade. I love the design of this knife. I do not know why. I waited so long to try a canoe pattern. It's a nice compact shape. I could stick this in that little fifth pocket of my jeans and it would ride comfortably there. I love the way the bolsters come up and kind of hide the Well, oh, I'm pulling from the wrong side. Kind of hide the tip of the blade. 
and the corner of it here so that everything's nice and smooth it doesn't snag in your pocket or anything like that uh, the weight is good not too heavy and not too light the fit and finish are on par with knives costing three or four times as much just a beautiful knife and I absolutely love this knife but this knife has a well I'm not gonna call it a failing because uh, I'll talk about more when I tell you what it is but this knife is made out of 420 J2 steel 420 J2 is not a very good knife material it just isn't 420 in general unless you uh, get something like 420 HC from Buck specifically is most of the time a marginal steel for knives this on its best day could probably be heat treated to about 55 on the Rockwell scale so if you purchase a knife like this if you purchase this knife and you use it more than just lightly you're going to be sharpening it guaranteed okay but for these traditional folders that's kind of common um, even case and some of the other higher brands and I'm not talking about the boutique stuff because some of that is made with uh, more modern steels and stuff like that but these traditional knives most of them are between 55 and 58 on the Rockwell scale now 58 in my opinion is pretty good but a lot of the modern guys like 60 61 steels that'll get up there but these knives are not made if you look at this knife does that look like a knife that was made to baton in the wilderness for your uh, bushcraft lore or your bushcraft skills does it look like a knife that was meant to be worked really really hard no that's not what these were designed for matter of fact when knives like this these traditional slip joints were popular uh, when they first started back knives like these helped win this country they helped win the West in one form or another some type of traditional slip joint was in the pocket of most men in the 1800s you know that time period 19 early 1900s okay but most of the time if they were doing if they were uh, farming if they were ranching you, you know something like that cattlemen or or whatnot or if they were trappers or traders or anything like that they carried one of these little knives in their pocket to do simple tasks or fine intricate tasks and they carried a nice fat fixed blade on their hip many of which were buoys but some kind of nice fat fixed blade on the hip to do the rugged kind of work so these knives were not meant for that and, and guys today that aren't familiar with them want to push them into the same category as like the modern uh, tactical type folders uh, the uh, I forget what they're called but it's kind of the free opening kind of you know what I'm talking about all right uh, with the harder steels and stuff they weren't meant to be used like that when uh, Buck came along and in, and introduced the 110 they were introducing a folding knife that was uh, supposed to kind of be a bridge between something like this and a fixed blade you had some of the attributes of a bigger blade but you could fold it up and it took up less space okay and a lot of the modern folders started because of that knife okay now we have the tactical knives that got one blade and, and the, it locks back and it's made out of really strong steel and stuff like that and 
a lot of guys don't understand what these knives were. So, do I like the fact that this is 420J2? No, not at all. But for what I'm going to ask this knife to do, and the work that this knife will perform, it's adequate to the task. And if I need, if I, if somehow I need more edge than both of these blades, and by the way, these have already been sharpened by me, and these blades took an absolutely scalding edge. Uh, some of the best edges I ever put on a knife went on these two blades. Just outstanding, okay? If I need more of an edge than this blade and this blade will give me, I keep in my vehicle a silicon carbide stone and a uh, soft Arkansas. And in just a matter of a few minutes, the edge, I can take that soft, soft Arkansas and bring these edges back up and keep getting it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And these were not, these are not designed in the same way. They're not meant to be used in the same way. So this is a beautiful knife. And one that I really enjoy carrying in my pocket. And it is made just as nice as any USA buck outside of the type of steel that's used in it. It's made just as nice in it as any USA buck that you'll find. Just a beautiful knife. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.